Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Godot game engine, specifically because Godot 3.2.4 Beta 4 was just released, and that's a pretty minor release if I'm honest, but I'm talking about this one because there is some news in there that has literally been 20 years in the making, technically 23 years in the making I believe. Uh, so let's jump in, take a look at what is new in Beta 4 or in 3.24 in general. By the way, this is obviously a beta so don't use it in production, you know all that by now. Uh, so there's a lot going on in 3.2.4 alongside the development of Godot 4. So obviously Godot 3.2.x is the stable branch for now, and Godot 4 is what is currently the master branch over at GitHub and is the future of Godot. But the nice thing is they continue to add new features to the 3.2 branch. So Beta 4 adds a new round of bug fixes and enhancements over previous dev snapshots, as well as some new features. And really, there are three key new features in this release, specific to 3.2.4, and one of them is significant enough that I am not only going to talk about here, I'm also going to show you how to use it. So the first thing we have is GD native support coming to HTML5 targets. Now, there are some caveats here. Uh, you can't do multi-threading and dynamic linking at the same time, so GD native or multi-threading when it comes to uh, WebAssembly. It's a limitation of WebAssembly. I don't know that they're going to work around that one. And generally, uh, not going to be a huge deal for most people. But the nice thing is with GD Native, and GD Native being the way to call C++ code more easily and dynamically from inside the Godot game engine, coming to more and more platforms, it becomes a more straightforward way to implement things. So instead of having to implement them as the much harder module system, uh, things like, say, in-app purchases or leaderboards or that kind of stuff can be implemented as GD Native implementations. And with it working on more and more platforms, now including HTML5 via web assembly, that is definitely a good thing. Uh, next, we had some, well, I'm going to skip over the one that I'm going to cover next. Uh, we also had some uh, fixes to the rewritten FBX imported. I did a video about that in the past. I actually showed you some uh, FBX files imported using the new rewritten importer. What they basically did is they stripped down asset importer uh, or ass imp. Uh, they stripped out all of the other formats that we don't need. They rewrote the specific FBX part. And then they kind of ended up rewriting the entire thing from scratch. It went from something like 100,000 lines of code down to something like 20,000 uh, as part of the rewrite. And uh, from what my experiences were, the FBX importer worked a heck of a lot better. I will link that in the linked article down below if you want to go ahead and check out the improved FBX importer. Well, the nice thing is, you know, anything that's completely new is going to cause some issues, so they've improved their improvements. Yes, there are a number of fixes to the written FBX importer, so it should be even better from the last time that I imported it. And when I did the tests, I did run into a couple of snags and issues and so on when I was trying to import some FBX objects, so hopefully that works even even better. And then finally, the thing that I've been skipping over here uh, is MP3 loading is finally there. Now, MP3, uh, it's the industry standard for audio. It just is. It's maybe not the best codec out there for encoding your audio, but it won, probably due to the proliferation of MP3 players, even though I think pretty much every MP3 player on the market right now can play FLAC or OG um, Og Vorbis format and so on. MP3 has stuck around, and most people's music collections out there are probably in MP3 format. Same with if you download something off the interwebs and you want to use it in your game or you buy a royalty-free collection, uh, it's probably in MP3 format. And hopefully in uh, wave format if it was professional collection but anyways uh, mp3 was a license encumbered format for years basically there was a company called Fraunhofer I probably said that really wrong a German company that had all of the licensing agreements to mp3 and they sub licensed it out to other people uh, started back in the night in the the late 80s so they had the, the codec license for mp3 anyone wanted to use it had to license it from them. The thing is, three years ago, Fraunhofer's license expired. That means that it was now in the public domain and anyone can use MP3 format. It means it was no longer license encumbered. Now, I don't know that many people actually got sued over using MP3s, but there was always that threat there. And given how litigious this world is, it's a viable threat. So you can now play MP3 files inside of the Godot game engine. Yay! and there was much, much rejoicing. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. It's very simple. I created a new project called MPB. Ha, 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 ha. Anyways, a lot of loads. Uh, what you do, basically just create a scene like normal, drop your MP3 file in. You will notice it is recognized as a valid uh, format. Of course, what you're going to have to do is use uh, Blender 3.2.4, Beta 4, or whatever the heck we're up to right now. Uh, 3.2.4. 
I don't even remember anymore. You got to use this version. Uh, 3.2.4 beta 4. All right, not 4. Okay, so you got to use that version, obviously, or your MP3 file is just going to be uh, an unrecognized file format. Now, actually, creating and playing audio really couldn't be easier. Come on in here, add a node of type audio stream player. If you want positional uh, data, go with 3. Otherwise, go with 2D. Drop one into the scene, and we are most of the way there. All that is left now is to create a stream. You will notice if you open this up, in addition to the Og Vorbis audio stream, we now have MP3. And by the way, this one here is for uh, raw wave data files. Um, so just open up the MP3 file like so, or we can literally just drag and drop the MP3 over here like this. And there is your waveform data in MP3 format. If you want to autoplay it, you can do so. If you want to turn it on right here, which I'm going to do. Let's go. And now you get my bad joke. Oh, here, I'll turn the mic. There you go. So you get audio playing. Audio playing, MP3 format, works just like you would work. And we probably pause that. Works just like it would work if you're using uh, Vorbis. It's just now, uh, you know, I, I prefer AUG. I would probably use AUG in my own project at this point in time. But a lot of things, a lot of raw asset files come in MP3 format. It keeps you from having to do a conversion process. Uh, so that is definitely nice. Also, every single codec has its strengths, its weakness. Sometimes they load faster, use less memory, uh, use less CPU or GPU uses, and so on. So it's always a balancing trading point. And another key thing, and this one is actually pretty important, Aug Vorbis, to my knowledge, is not supported on Apple platforms, on iOS anyways. So it's always been a bit of a workaround to get things working in those platforms. So you always used to have it, like when it looked at audio breakdowns of compatibility, it would be Aug Vorbis on Android in here, and then it'd be like MP3 on this platform, and web audio would only play this, and so on. So it is one of the most universally supported formats. It is finally in here. Now, this is not it for 3.2.4 generally, but that is it for beta 4. Uh, we got a number of things coming in 3.24 release overall. Some really nice ones, including uh, 2D sprite batching for GLES3. I think I did a video about that as well. Uh, should bring us much better performance for our 2D sprite drawing games. Basically, what you do is you batch a bunch of uh, sprite calls. So instead of, you know, drawing a thousand different sprites, you batch them all together and then make one draw call. It should generally perform faster. Uh, new software skinning for mesh instances, rewritten and greatly improved FBX importer. Again, uh, improved web editor prototype. This is actually has ability to run um, Godot entirely in the browser. I did do a video about that one for sure. I do a lot of Godot videos. Um, new option to snap 2D transform to whole coordinates, uh, Mac, OS ARM64 support, so the M1 chip, if you're one of those people, uh, it's only in classical, not mono yet, but it is in there. You can now configure the number of lights per object from eight up to a hold of 32. And the nice thing is with Godot 4, that's gonna go away completely with the new lighting system. Uh, optional GD native support for HTML5, again, that one is new, and MP3 support for beta, uh, for um, beta 4 only as well. So definitely some nice stuff. And then we got a bunch of smaller uh, things. What you should probably notice here, this is beta, and the key thing with beta is they're looking for, you know, testing and feedback and so on. The big areas they want people to test out are uh, Android app bundling, MP3 loading, optimized oct trees, rewritten importer for FBX files, uh, GLES orphaning on the desktop, various improvements to 2D batching, 2D batching again, uh, audio worklet support, multi-threaded builds, uh, GD native support for HTML5, uh, the ARM64 or the M1 support on Mac OS. These are the kind of things that they really want uh, to focus on testing. Obviously, a lot of those things are the new stuff because they are the least tested in this particular release. If you do want to check all of this stuff out, download links are here. Obviously, these are specific, not these ones. You do not go here. You do not do that. You will get the old version. And I only point this out, not at all because I did it. No, no, I definitely didn't screw up and download the wrong version. I, I promise you that if we go to my downloads folder, you're not going to find a Godot 3.2.3 beside Godot 3.2.4. That would be stupid, and I would not do that, of course. So if you're gonna go ahead and download Godot 3.2.4 beta 4, get it here. The standard build there, or the mono build, do not get it here. So definitely some nice stuff in here. Uh, again, the nice new MP3 Sport. That one's, again, 20 years in the making, which is nice to see it finally here. It's part of impressive that ARM64 support is in there, especially because so many open source developers are fed up with Apple. I'm shocked that anyone bothered to do that one. Um, and then we've got, you know, GD Native uh, for HTML stuff in there, the FBX importer improving more and more. 
So it looks like 3.2.4 is going to be a pretty nice release, especially with, again, you can move your lights up from 8 to, to uh, 32, and then you've got the GLES batching. If you're working on a 2D game, 3.2.4 should be a pretty nice release when it is finished. Uh, but yep, Beta 4, check that out. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.